Hey guys, it's Kim here with Fairly Fiber Fun. Thank you so much for joining me on this felting demonstration. So today I am showing you how I make a set of four coasters. And the voiceover here is going to go into all the details and tell you exactly what is going on. What you're seeing right now is me laying out thin layers of fiber over a stencil that just shows me how big I need them to be. And this stencil is actually an inch or so bigger um, in length and width than I want the final coaster to be because the coasters are going to shrink that much. And the fiber is going off the coaster, so I'm going to be trimming it down later. What I am going to do is lay out fibers in horizontal and vertical, horizontal, vertical, until I have six to eight layers, depending on how thick my layers are. And then start decorating with color. And you can do this any way you want to do. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, it doesn't matter how you do it. It's what you want. Use your creativity. You can use little bits of yarn. Um, you can use pre-felt. If you're using something that is not going to felt well or is already felted, you might want to put... Um, a little bit of fiber on top of it, just a really thin layer on top to make sure it all felts into place and doesn't go flying off. So um, while we're doing this part, I want to say thank you for joining me. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you um, don't miss any of my new videos as they come out. So once you get all the colors laid out the way you want to, then you need to get them wet. Now. As I worked on these and made a bunch of them more and more and more, this video was filmed near the beginning of my learning process, I learned to flip them over face down before getting them wet and that works just fine too. You don't need, need to keep using the stencil. So, but in this video, um, in this instance, I'm wetting them all down and then I'm flipping them face down because I want to felt from the back. I want the design to stay put. Um, if you don't have a design, it doesn't matter which way you're doing it. So that is something to keep in mind. But the more complicated your design is, the more carefully you're going to want to handle it. Um, and anytime you move it around, your design may shift. It may shift during felting slightly. Um, but if you're careful, it'll be okay. I've done Christmas trees and that's pretty complicated. And they turned out okay. So, um... The next step is to put the bubble wrap on top. Bubble side is always touching the wool, um, so the textured side touches wool. And then just start massaging. And if you have gloves and you don't want to get all that soap on your hands, um, then you can wear medical or food grade gloves. And it really helps with the slipperiness and you'll use less soapy water. So you massage three to five minutes, flip the whole thing over, massage three to five minutes. And then take the top bubble wrap off and massage three to five minutes again. Um, at this stage, it's barely starting to felt. So when you're working on the design side, you want to start off very, very soft and gentle. And only start putting pressure on once the design is staying put. It's not trying to lift up anymore. And then you can put a lot of pressure on and you can really get aggressive with the felting with the rubbing again if you're wearing gloves it makes this a lot easier i hate wearing gloves i sweat through them so they end up more wet on the inside than on the outside and it's just gross so anyways i don't like to wear gloves when i work but sometimes i do and sometimes it's worth it so once i get done um doing the three to five minutes on both sides of the coasters without the bubble the top bubble wrap that is the pre-felt stage then you trim, then I trim off the excess wool from around my stencil. I just use the stencil as a form so I know where to trim off or how much to trim off. You can trim down the corners so that they're rounded. I found um, just cutting a straight line off the corner is works just as well as cutting a curved line off the corner. Either way, it's going to end up curved. So the felting is felting is really magical and amazing. And um, this was like my first 
major wet felting project. I had made a little bowl first, um, and that was the, you know, the first thing I ever wet felted. This is the second thing I ever wet felted. It was coasters. Um, so it's, it's pretty amazing to be able to turn something square into something with rounded corners. It's just really neat. Anyways, the pre-felt pieces are going to be recycled later. They're not going to get thrown away. Once you're done with the pre-felt and the trimming, then it's time to wrap it up. And in this instance, I am actually layering it in the bubble wrap and then rolling it in the shelf liner. You don't have to use the bubble wrap. You can just use the shelf liner. Um, either way works just fine. I have didn't find any pros or cons to using the bubble wrap. So we're not using it. So this shelf liner is actually too skinny for what I'm trying to do. So I have to shift the coasters around at the next stage. Once you have it rolled up, then you want to roll or rock back and forth 100 times minimum. You're going to do this four times. So you're gonna unroll, um, readjust the coasters so that they're laying a different way. So where they were vertical, they're now going to be horizontal. And then the next time you rotate them, you're going to flip them over and rotate so that you're getting both directions with tops up and both directions with bottoms up. Um, and it is 100 times one forward back roll is one. So forward back one, forward back two, three, four, all the way to 100. This is where you get your workout. This is where you... Um, wear out your arms or wear out your kids arms if you have children that don't mind helping out uh, mine actually enjoy this work and they they make a game out of it I'll have two of them doing this at the same time and they're just competing with each other to see how well they can do it's kind of fun this is my probably one of my least favorite parts of making coasters and felting is the rolling and rolling and rolling um, which is why I like to let my kids do it Anyways, um, I have discovered that I can make all of my coasters to the pre-felt stage, like four or five sets, and then do this stage of rolling and rolling and rolling. And then I don't have to do it as many times, and it saves a lot of time. Um, this can take anywhere from five to ten minutes, depending on how quickly you move. I move pretty quickly. This is all real-time live speed. I didn't speed anything up for today's video here. So we're doing the last little bit of rolling and then um, once you're done with that, you have activated all of the layers of fiber. So they're all freaking out, grabbing hold of each other, Velcroing together, just what you want. But they haven't started really shrinking yet. So you wad it up each roll lag into your hand and begin to roll it in circles. Um, I find this to be probably the quickest way to get them to shrink down. And once you get them pretty much where you want them, if you want them a little bit denser, just throw them on the floor about 10, 20 times, um, as hard as you can. And for some reason, that really makes a difference. So be as rough as you want to be and beat the snot out of them. <laughs> the The felting is works best if you're... At the end of the felting, it works best if you're as rough as you can possibly be. And children love throwing them on the floor as hard as they can. Um, it's a fun game. So feel free to use your children for this um, final stage. And then once once they're the right size and they're, they're a little bit smaller than the stencil, or they're the size you want them to be and they feel pretty firm and like the layers are not coming apart, not wanting to drift, like there's, there's no air in between the layers, I guess. Then it's time to wash them. And this is just water. There's no soap in it. Um, the idea is to get the soap out of the wool. So here I'm being pretty rough. I'm rubbing and squeezing and shaking and just getting all the soap out of all the layers and being rough because don't there's no reason to be gentle. It's felting. Um, and the more rough you are, the more firmly felted they will be. Once you've gotten them all rinsed and, you know, wadded up and weird, then you can either roll them in a towel like I'm doing 
or you can put them through your spin dryer, the spin cycle on your washer. If you're only doing one set, it works really well to roll them in a towel. I find that to be the um, least fiddly and quickest way to get the excess water out. So it doesn't really matter how you lay them um, and roll them up and then in the towel and just put weight on them. You can stomp on them, you can stand on them, you can jump on them, your kids can jump on them, they can make a game out of it. You know, this is a great activity for children to participate in. Once you're satisfied with how much moisture has been removed, then you can reshape them, make sure the edges are kind of how you want them and all that, and lay them out to dry and they're done. Congratulations, you've made a set of coasters. I hope you enjoyed the video and enjoy making your own set of coasters, and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys!